Howdy champs, my name is Mohitan guys. Uh, today I'm going to teach you in Flash Professional CS55 how to make a video gallery. I want to touch this uh, subject a lot because uh, there are hardly any tutorials made on this subject. There's not much reference on how to do it. Alright, guys, uh, this is my folder called video lying on the desktop and inside the folder guys I have the FLA, the Swift file. I've already made the project. Uh, a file called video.mp4, video1.mp4 and video2.mp4. So basically I'm using three video files which play one after the other. In fact, let me first show you my project. Uh, let me first run the Swift and then I'll explain the project. Okay guys, but just remember the folder which is uh, holding the FLA should also hold the Swift and should also hold the uh, three or four or five or whatever number of uh, videos uh, that you'll be using. Right. So first things first, let me show you a, a published preview by hitting this uh, Swift file. Howdy champs. My name is Moira guys. So I'm going to show you how to make next button. How do you chance? My name is next button. So basically, and the moment I hit the next button again, it'll loop and how take you back chance? to the first video. So, so looping gallery, guys, looping video gallery, as you can clearly see. How do you chance? As you can see out here, I also have the pause button and a corresponding play button. My name is Mohitan, guys. So I'm going to show you or to use the HTML video tag. Yeah. So very, very cool guys. This video gallery has three buttons, the play, the pause and the next button. When you hit the next button, it will take you to the next video, right? You hit the next button again, it will take you to the next video. You hit the next button the third time, loop back. So basically, uh, you know, it will come back to the very first uh, video, go to the second one, go to the third one, come back to the first one. It's in an endless loop, guys. And the play, the pause, and the next buttons work to a perfection. Right. So, uh, guys, before I actually dive inside Flash Pro CS55 and explain the script to you, uh, let me tell you once again what I've done. I made sure that the FLA, the Swift, and all the videos present. I've used three videos, guys. You could have used n, n number of videos. That's up to you. Entirely up to you. Right. Should be in the same folder. That's how the script is designed. Anyways, uh, I'm, I'm going back to uh, Flash Pro. Guys, uh, let's upfront examine what exactly is on the stage and what exactly is inside the library. Right. As you can see out here, guys, this is a play button. Uh, in the strict sense, if I go to the properties, it's actually a movie clip. The instance name is play underscore btn. Right. This is the pause uh, underscore btn guys. That's the instance name. It's actually a movie clip, right? And here we have the next button, which is actually in the true sense is a movie clip. And uh, the, as I said, the instance name is next underscore btn. Guys, I'm not going to show you how to work with movie clips, how to create movie clips. This is not a very basic tutorial. I'm assuming that you know at least this much. You know at least how to give instance name. You know at least how, how to create movie clips. See in the library, the next, the pause and the play, these are the three uh, movie clips that I'm using in my project. Also guys, you can see out here, we have a FLV playback component. Now this must lie in the library. How, how can you actually get it in the library? Let's say if this was not there in the library, let me delete it. How would I actually get it? It's very easy guys. All you need to do is you need to go to components, uh, which is out here. And you can drag the FL under the videos folder. The, the first option is FLV playback. You need to drag and drop it in the library and you'll get the FLV playback component. Unless and until you have this lying in the library, the script won't fire. You can be absolutely sure of that. Right? So let me close the components and let me take you inside the action spam. All right. Guys, the script that I'd written, which took me around one and a half to two hours to write, because it actually involves a lot of logic, guys. It may seem easy to you that I'm giving it away in the next two, three minutes, but it took me around one and a half to two hours to write this script. Uh, we have to 
import two classes in the first uh, couple of uh, uh, action script three statements so i've imported the flv playback class and the mouse events right see Next, guys, what I've done is I've declared variables. The first variable that I've declared, I've called it i, and I made it equal to zero. Okay. The second variable, I'm calling it my array. It's actually an array because the type is an array. And this is where I actually feed the names of the videos that I need to play, which are lying in my uh, video folder, which is lying on the desktop, guys. So the name of the videos respectively are video.mp4, video1.mp4 and video2.mp4. Uh, so basically I'm using three videos guys, uh, video, video1, video2. All right. I have created or declared one more variable and I'm calling it my video. Okay. Uh, the type is FLV playback. Uh, which, which is equal to a new FLV playback. Basically, I'm creating a new instance of a FLV playback component, which is actually lying in the library. All right. Then, guys, uh, I'm using the source property and I'm making the source of my video equal to my array dot i. Now, i is zero. So basically, I'm calling my array zero. And my array zero is this. My array one is this. And my array two is this. If you know how to work with arrays, as I said, this is not a very basic tutorial. Uh, you should uh, not find this difficult at all, guys. So my array i is actually my array 0, which is referencing the first video. Right. Then I'm using the add child method to add the video onto the stage. Next, I'm making sure that the autoplay property is set to true, which means that the video starts playing automatically. Uh, if you wish, you can set it to false as well. Right. Here I'm declaring the width of the video and the height of the video using the width and the height properties, guys. Because I know for sure that the original size of the video is actually 640 by 360. Cool. Uh, I'm also making sure that my video is, you know, is placed at X20, Y20. All right. So it's not exactly tucked in the corner, but it's slightly offset by 20 pixels each. Uh, also, guys, I have a play underscore BTN and a pause underscore BTN. Let me show them to you. This is the play underscore BTN. And we had as, and we, as we had discussed earlier, this movie clip has been called play underscore BTN. The second one has been called pause underscore BTN. And the last one has been called next underscore BTN. So... <coughs> Excuse me. So guys, what I'm, I'm doing out here is I'm making sure that the play underscore BTN acts like the play button for my video. And the way to do it through action script is this one single line of uh, AS3. So my video dot play button is equal to play underscore BTN. This will ensure that the play underscore BTN acts like the play button for my video. Now the second, the next line or the sixteenth line makes sure that the pause underscore BTN acts as the pause button for my video, right? Uh, guys, next what I've done is I made sure that the next button dot button mode is equal to true. When you set the button mode of a movie clip equal to true, you actually get that nice finger instead of the mouse pointer when you hover over the 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 button. Okay, so you must have seen that you get a finger instead of a, a pointer, right? Uh, line 19, we have in line 19, we have added an event listener of the type uh, click. So when somebody clicks on next underscore BTN, it listens for the click. And once it registers a click, uh, it uh, runs a function called click handler. All right. And the function click handler guys ensures that the I increments by one. So if you uh, remember initially it was set to zero now i made it equal to one the moment somebody clicks on the i all right here we are tracing the value of i and my array dot length anyways and the moment guys here we have an if conditional it checks if my array if i is equal to my array dot length uh, i i set it back to zero this line ensures the moment you reach the last video i is set back to zero and the videos are video gallery is in a loop all right 
Also guys, through line number 25, and I'm ensuring that I'm actually changing the source of the video. So since I++ uh, plus plus means that somebody clicks on the next button, I becomes one from zero, and the source becomes my array one instead of zero, which is the next video, then it becomes two, three, four, etc., etc., because we are incrementing i every time somebody clicks the uh, next button. And through this line, I'm ensuring that once the array length is reached, you know, or the last video is reached, uh, the video, uh, the first video starts to play again. So basically, it's it's creating that loop, right? So barely 26 lines of uh, Action Script three guys. Um, a very compact script and almost everything out here has been done through the action script we, we've not used a lot of uh, we've not done anything on the timeline as you can see out here there's just one single frame guys let me call it actions as3 rather that's all that you have so we have one single frame and if you look at the stage guys uh, you have three uh, movie clips play underscore btn pause underscore btn and next underscore btn and that's all that you have and everything else has been uh, you know uh, fired off by the uh, as3 so as3 really is so very strong guys right so before i wind the tutorial let me show you a uh, publish preview once again by hitting control enter on the keyboard guys howdy champs my name is Moirin guys Howdy champs, my name is Mohit. Howdy champs, my name is Mohit. And guys, I'm going to show you how. Alright, so everything is working just the way I want it to. So guys, before I wind the tutorial, uh, let me tell you once again that this folder, the video folder, is actually hosting the flower, the Swift and all the three videos. You can use as many videos as you want. You just need to make slight alteration to the code. All right. You just need to increase the array items. That's all that you need to do. You need to increase the array items depending on the name of the videos, guys. All right. And make sure the flower, the Swift, and the videos are lying in the same folder, guys. So, guys, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. I hope you learned something from it. And I hope to see you very soon with yet another flash. Uh, or Action Script 3 tutorial, or it could be an HTML, CSS, Dreamweaver tutorial. You have a good day, guys. Bye-bye. Peace.